Hey guys, we're Evan and Caitlin, and today we're gonna to show you our most used 3D print. These guys. <laughs> so we made these, how many years ago? Two years ago? To hold our brooms and stuff. It might seem like it's really simple, like a no-brainer, but in this video, we're gonna talk about magnets, CAD, 3D printing, brooms, not brooms, we're not gonna talk about brooms. <laughs> we're gonna start off by talking about magnets. Magnets! <laughs> I'll let you take that part. <laughs> you have to choose the right magnet for what you're hanging on the hook so that it doesn't just go So we have the ceramic one, which is rated for 35 pounds. And we have this neodymium magnet, which is rated for 70 pounds. And we have a scale to see how much they're lying. <laughs> which they, they, they may not be. That 35 pounds assumes that it's against a quarter inch carbon steel plate which most people aren't going to be using magnets with. That also assumes you're pulling straight out. Oftentimes you're pulling down, which isn't as strong. So there's lots of things that'll impact that strength. So we're gonna be testing these two things here, just because I wanna see if they're actually the strength rating that they're saying. And then we're also gonna test them in the fridge and then see how that affects the strength. And now whoo, whoo, you zero out our scale. You ready? Yeah. 24. Oh, that's not 35. One more try. Uh, let, let, let's see how much weight it holds going down, because that's what really matters to us. 11 pounds. Oh, not so much. Already we've gone down from 35 to 11, and it's going to get even worse when we go to the refrigerator. Uh, down to four. So for this test, against a thinner piece of metal, a shearing direction, we're only getting 11% of what we saw online. So you can hang something four pounds here, but more than that, and it will slide. Let's see how neodymium works. Neodymium. My favorite. Oh my gosh. This one's the 70 pounds? 70 pounds. Oh gosh. I can't even, I'm worried. Oh yeah, that's gonna hurt. Oh. I'm gonna yank it. You're moving the whole workbench. Okay, I'm gonna trust this. Let's see how much it takes to pull it down. Wow. 18, that's yeah. pretty good. To the fridge. <sighs> oh. oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 21 pounds. So now downwards test. What? Whoa, it's less or the same? I have a theory. I think it's because this is smoother. So if we increase the friction, it would increase the amount it could hold by a ton. And I have just the thing. Ooh. I don't know why I bought this, but it's just so cool. It's like this super high friction material and you can add it to anything. I'm only gonna try this on the neodymium because the force is dispersed across the whole face. For this ceramic, all of the magnetic force is concentrated along the rim, so this wouldn't work as well. What do you think? It just, it doesn't go to the edges. It just like makes it wobble. I need to get better at cutting things out. How good are your circle cutting skills? Bad! <laughs> You're gonna rip out some eyelashes. <laughs> Take two. Ah. Oh. That was worse. So I think what the, what, 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 we're gonna have to like cut that whole scene maybe. Magnets don't scale well over distance. So what we're doing is- Adding what, friction, but adding distance. Oh. Come, come, come. What I was doing is I was pulling right here and I was just tilting it Tilting off. it. Oh, no. Oh. You ready to give up on the uh, friction paper? <laughs> we probably spent way too long on this whole magnets thing, but it just goes to show you test, don't make assumptions, because I thought that this 70 pound neodymium magnet would totally outperform this 35 pound ceramic one. But the ceramic one is better in this circumstance. The more you know. You ready for some CAD? 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 Some CAD? 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 CAD. CAD. <laughs> so here's a sketch of the little peg that's gonna go into our magnet. There's a couple dimensions that we need to keep in mind. This actually has a screw going through the magnet into this peg here, so this inner diameter. The other is the height of the lip on the end. Can't be bigger than the hole in our broom. So, we're gonna mock it up in CAD. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work that way. <laughs> I'm new to CAD, um, but this should be pretty simple. So I sketched 
finished our general shape, we're gonna now revolve this around the center line. Gonna help show that's our profile, and then we revolve it around the center line. So we could 3D print it like this upright, but the downside is because the layer lines print like this, you could snap it easily and we don't want that. So we're actually gonna print it like this. But that means we have to slice up the bottom so that it has a flat edge to print on. So I did one last sketch and I'm gonna do an extrude cut backwards. There it is. This is what we're going to print. So the reason we put our print in a vise is because our screw is bigger than our hole because we wanted it to have some material to bite into, but we don't want it to split when we're screwing into it, so we have to have it contained. And if you don't have a vise, you can totally use pliers instead. All right guys, thanks so much for joining us. I hope you learned something. I certainly was surprised by the results between the magnets. The whole magnet scene was like kind of a big detour, but I loved it. I don't know, that was fun. If you want more big detours, you can check those out in our after shows, which we record after every video. So those are at patreon.com slash Evan and Caitlin. You can also support us by buying our shirts. Those are at shop evanandcaitlin.com. So thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. So we have this, mm, no. <laughs> And I don't... Evan, take it away! <laughs> 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 <laughs>